Oh no, you caught me making my breakfast. Really? That's what you're gonna go no, with? Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold and rainy. It is. We woke up and it was pouring rain. I mean, yeah. I mean like torrential, and it was just like, you know what? You know what I heard outside? No. Wow, wow. Roof, roof, roof. No? Because it was raining cats and dogs. Yes. So they were very strange. Yes, I am. Um, so we decided we're not going to go to the gym today. We'll go tomorrow. It's going to be less crazy tomorrow. The rain will be, it'll be a little warmer and it's not supposed to rain as hard. So we didn't go today. Thank you, dear. Um, but we are going to have oatmeal. Yes, we are. oatmeal is yummy. That's what we do. And we are going to talk to you guys. Yes, we are. Because um, that's what we do. That's what we do. Exactly. So I did some research on um, artificial sweeteners and what they do to our to our bodies because they were originally designed the whole point of artificial sweeteners. You're going to start that. Um, oh, good point. The, the whole point of artificial sweeteners was to help with the obesity epidemic. So they wanted to look for a way for humans to enjoy the taste of sweetness, but not have the negative impacts of sugar. Right. And so when they when it first came out, they found that um, artificial sweeteners cause, did cause migraines in some people mm -hmm. who were susceptible. Right. And what the company said was, well, you have to weigh the benefits of mm -hmm. dealing with the obesity epidemic against the small risk of migraines. Right. Okay, so they approved it across the board. But what they found is that it does cause a problem with insulin, which didn't make any sense because what the company, the company say is it doesn't get metabolized. It moves right through the system. It doesn't right. do anything. So then why is it impacting blood sugar and Breaks. insulin? Breaks on. Okay. <laughs> and what they found was that because it's not metabolized, it's not absorbed, it's not used, it ends up in our large intestine. Right. And as we've talked about before, our large intestine has a whole myco my, my, I can't even say it today. It has a whole bunch of gut bacteria in there. Right. Microbiome. There it is. There I can say it. And so when you get artificial sweetener that hasn't been digested in your large intestine, it negatively impacts your microbiome. Right. And that is what impacts insulin. And what I was looking at, the research I was looking at, didn't have the exact function of how it did that. Right. It just said that's what they what is is happening. And so even though this the whole point of all of these artificial sweeteners across the board was to help with the obesity epidemic and with the um, um, type two diabetes and metabolic syndromes and all the issues we have from taking in too much sugar is actually not helping it. Right. So the reason it got approved to begin with is no longer valid, which I thought was really interesting. And then you have the whole issue with aspartame, which I, you probably heard, is that aspartame, your body turns it into fem, 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 formaldehyde. formaldehyde. I cannot talk today, <laughs> you guys. We didn't turn on the camera. Oh, all right. Gonna, Turn it on? No, no. We'll, no, we'll do that. We've too. been turning the camera on so that if we pixelate on Facebook, I have the, like the camera, which obviously it is doing today again. Um, I have the camera instead so that I can upload it to Facebook and I forgot to turn the camera on. I set it up and I didn't turn it on. All right. So reach over there and turn it on, babe. Okay, we're only going to get. I know, but still. So aspartame turns to formaldehyde uh, in the body, which obviously is... Uh, not good, has adverse side effects. So if you look at any of the studies that the, um, the big companies that make fake sugar talk about, they say, oh, it's safe, all of them, 100% of it, oh, it's safe. But if you look at independent studies, 90% of them find adverse side effects. Right. So you that know, should tell you something. That should tell you something, right. that there's adverse side effects. And then we have to look at, um, things like IBD and Crohn's disease, which are issues with the gut. Right. And so there's no, they haven't done any real studies for cause and effect because cause and effect is pretty hard to study. So there's only correlation. Now correlation doesn't mean causation, but I, but this, the data that I saw was compelling enough that I want to share it with you. In every country when they've approved um, sucralose, which in the United States is sold under, under the brand name Splenda, um, the rates of chronic diseases like Crohn's disease, IBD, issues with the gut 
have doubled. And so they showed, the, the study I looked at showed a whole bunch of different graphs and a whole bunch of you know, Canada, Japan, the United States, a whole bunch of different countries. And every one of them, when they approved what is called Splenda in the United States, suddenly major issues with the gut increased. Right. That says something to me. That says maybe you shouldn't choose to use that as a sweetener. Oh, right. So does that mean that we should go back to using just regular sugar? Well, no, that has a whole host of other <laughs> issues associated right. with it. So, you know, taking in the extra sweetener is a problem. And so then I looked at, okay, well, what about honey and maple syrup and agave? So they don't have a whole lot of value to them as far as nutritional right. value they just goes. They don't have any nutritional value. That's and they is. act like sugar in your body. Right. So while we do use honey and we do use maple syrup here in this house, we use it sparingly. And as they, they, they say, if you're going to use a sweetener, it should be used as the point to be to help you intake higher levels of really good healthy foods right, right. not just to help you and, eat junk well what, what does dr essestein say about his wife she uses a, te a teaspoon teaspoon of brown, brown sugar, sugar on her oatmeal and, and this is the individual that we told you is very strict as far as when he uh, takes people and there's severe cases but he takes them on and puts them on whole food plant-based diet he's the no nuts no seeds no oils guy so now so your body can process low amounts of regular you know sugars right. and sweeteners so that's fine the problem but, go ahead and i said the problem is is that when you eat processed foods is that sugar is in everything so you're no longer eating low amounts you're eating massive amounts of sugar and it's the processed food and it's the processed food so the so. package is bad right but there are two types of sweeteners that do have some nutritional um value right. blackstrap molasses and date sugar they have some nutritional value and i realized when i read that like i've heard about blackstrap molasses before but it occurred to me that I didn't actually know what it was. Right. So I had to go ask Google, what is blackstrap molasses? And what I learned is it's a um, byproduct of making sugar from sugar cane. Right. It's almost, you can almost say, and this is my words, not, not any reports, but I want to say it's the good stuff that they've taken out of sugar. <laughs> and they bottled it and now they're selling it. So you're getting all the nutrients that they've restripped out of the, out of the out of regular sugar. Out of regular sugar? Yeah, sucrose. And, yeah. Uh, put it in a bottle. Now... For me, I've never actually tasted molasses except for when we used it, when, when I grew up on, a, on the beef ranch, we used it for the cattle. We would, they put um, nutrients and stuff that cattle needed in it, and then when they put it in a wheel and the cattle would lick it because it's sweet. And so I've only ever tasted it in that form. I've never- that, Wait a second. What? You used to use the wheel that- under... I didn't use the wheel, <laughs> but when you fill it, it okay. gets on your hands. Okay. Just the way you said it made me think. You're Ooh. such a goofball. Yeah. No, I was not licking the cattle wheel. <laughs> but I have tasted it because when you fill that thing, it gets on your hands. Yeah, right. I've never actually purchased black strap molasses right. for human consumption. And what did you think of it back then? Do you remember? I remember feeling like it was sweet but had like a bitter kind of undertone to it. Okay. So I'll, don't laugh at him. <laughs> <laughs> goofball. Sorry, love. Um, um, so I don't know. Do you, do you have, do you, does it taste that way to other people? If you've tried blackstrap molasses, let me know what you think. I'm interested in, um, you know, getting some and trying it and seeing kind of what the deal is with it and right. how it is. So, um, now I'm completely off track. You've completely I'm sorry. Did it, and that's hard to do. To I'm discombobulate sorry. my brain. I might be. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Not to a psychologist. Um, but, and then date sugar, obviously date sugar is really good. Right. So I think that that's, that's a fine, if you're, if you need a sweetener, what I'm, when I'm learning in the little bit of research I've done, it sounds like date sugar and blackstrap molasses are, two best ways are at least have some nutritional value right. to them. Now they're caloric. They're going to raise your insulin levels. They're going to have all the impact that right. sugar has, right. but at least you get some kind of nutritional something. Yeah. Out so of no it. molasses ice pops is what we're saying, because that's not good. <laughs> What? Where does he come up with this stuff, you guys? <laughs> <laughs> so um, that, that's what I learned is that pretty much we need to stay away from artificial sweeteners. They're not doing us any favors. They're bad for your gut biome. Um, they don't do what they're supposed to do, which is protect us from the obesity and, and the diabetes and the metabolic syndrome issues. 
and um, regular sugar, obviously we know yeah. the risks of that. So if you need a sweetener in the house, and I, I know there's at least a couple of you who've reached out to me and asked about sweeteners. So it looks like date sugar is gonna be your way to go. And I'll go get some uh, some blackstrap molasses yeah. and maybe I'll put it in a little baby wheel. And maybe you put it in your corn muffins. <laughs> no baby wheels. No baby wheels? No. Okay. All right. That's what I had for you That's guys it for today. our comic relief today. So crazy. What is Patty Ann saying that she's been using monk fruit as a sweetener? Yeah. yeah, I guess that would be sweet and that could be. I don't know what monk fruit yeah. is, so I'm, I'm a little. Um, uh... I'll have to do some research. I'll write it down and I'll look at that. I'll let you guys know. Thank you, Patty Ann, for sharing that yeah. with us. Writing, writing, writing. <laughs> All right. If you're getting value or even entertainment out of these things, which apparently we are the comic relief today. Um, Oh, I read something about stevia. What did I read about stevia? Mm. Eh, I didn't write it down and I don't remember. Um, let me look it up, Laura. I um, I did have, I had something about it that, it, I know it said it was safe up to a certain level. Yes. Like two sodas per day worth or something. I think what they said was they, they compared like a liter to a two liter. Was that the one where they did that? And, and they said if you drank one liter of diet soda. Worth. You were okay as far as how much stevia is in that, but if you went beyond that, then it became an issue. Like it's safe to a certain level and then it's not safe after that. Right. For me, if something's not safe after a certain level, I'm just going to say no, I don't okay. want it. Thank and it's you. Not an, that's not an endorsement to drink diet soda, by the way. No, don't no, drink diet don't soda. Don't drink diet soda. So, yeah, that's what I would say about stevia. Um, oh, it can lower sperm count. Well, there you go. We, well, we don't hmm. want any of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> can't be a good thing. No, can't be. If it's killing off cells, it's not preferable. Of any kind. Right. I agree. So, um, organic stevia leaf. Yeah, I mean, anything, we've always said, if you can afford the organic, get the organic. Absolutely. That's definitely Absolutely. the best option. Um, I don't know if they, the study was that they were saying that that was the amount that they gave people was the amount that would be in soda. I've never seen it in soda yeah, or anything else, not that I look, of course. But back in the day when I used to drink diet soda, I mean, well, originally it was saccharin, which you can't even get anymore. And, Thank goodness. And, right. And then it became aspartame. And I don't know if they've ever switched over from something else, but my experience is that it always had aspartame in it. Yeah. But somebody may know something different. I've not drank diet soda in a few years, um, so I don't know. Yeah. So, anyway, as I was saying, if you're getting value out of these, <laughs> please do like and share them. Let other people know about us and the work that we're doing to try and make America healthy again. It's our goal. <laughs> Eliminate diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, all those terrible diseases that don't need to exist. That's our goal. Right. It's a little goal, but you know, it's that's a little our goal. one. Yeah. So please do share us with others. Um, it's Friday. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for being here, all of you, and for engaging in the conversation. It's fun to be able to talk to you. Thank you for the hearts and the likes. I'm not thanking you for laughing at him because it encourages <laughs> his bad behavior. <laughs> How about a week from today? Yes. Go, you want to tell So him? a week from today, we will be at the um, Natural Food Store in downtown Newark. That's Delaware. Delaware. Um, at 6 o'clock at night, we'll be doing a talk. What's the name of our talk for this one? It's we're, we're doing our talk titled, Your Body Can't Count Calories and Neither Should You. Exactly. Uh, so we'll be doing that. And we're also going to have a, a vegan chef there. It's going to, I think now she's going to be preparing two different she's vegan meals. She's going to do two things that you can try and then they'll have all the ingredients already yeah, so gathered so you can just buy them and Basically, go. right. If you like one or both of them, you can just say, pick a bag and go and try it at home. Yep. Right. Absolutely. Um, so we would love for you to join us if you're local. Right. And there, there is a, a Facebook event for that. And I will share it again today on my right. page. Exactly. So. And I don't know what, and who knows what else will pop up for that event. But it uh, should be fun. Again, it's a Friday night. So it's a we good, from today. It's perfect for date night. Come out. Bring your, bring your spouses and bring them out. Kids are welcome. Right. Absolutely. Okay. And so are we done? Yeah. I'm, we are, and like I said, I'm putting this stuff on YouTube, hopefully without pixelation. Right. Hopefully. We're working on that. Uh, and so with that, we will say, eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great Thanks weekend. Thanks for being here, guys. It's good to see you. We'll see you Monday.